Okay, let's move on to the version two of mobile NAND. So these are tiny improvements on the structure of mobile NAND. The idea is that you want to have residual connections. Okay, and then the question is, where are you gonna put the residual connection? Are you gonna take the output of this block and then put a residual connection from this big block to the next big block? These are your expansion layers. Or are you gonna go from where you had uh, a smaller number of channels and you, you add a residual connection there? And it turns out comparing different structures, it's better to go from the narrow or your bottleneck to the other bottleneck using your residual connection. So previously it was going from the bigger channel to the bigger channel, and that's why they are calling it inverted. So what are we doing? There is a one by one convolution that's gonna help you change the dimensionality from small dimensions to a larger dimension. Then you do a channel wise or depth wise convolution here, three by three to give you the other one. This is the output after this convolution. Now you do another one by one convolution to reduce the dimension. Now this block and that block have the same dimensionality. You can add them together to put your shortcuts. And this is exactly the operations that are happening. You start with a tensor that has H times W times K as its size. Then you do a one by one convolution. You do a ReLU nonlinearity with a little catch. I'm gonna tell you what is ReLU six. Then you expand it by a factor of T. That's the output. It has more channels. Now that's gonna be the input to the next operation, the depthwise separable convolution with a striding of S, you do another ReLU. So whenever you do a stride, your resolution is gonna drop and the number of channels is still the same as before. Now we are here, you take that as input, you do a linear 2D convolution and then that's what you get in the end. And K prime and K are the same, they have the same size. And what is the computational cost? If you write it down, that's gonna be your computational cost. It's a function of your expansion factor, T, the size of your input uh, to the block, which is H times W times K. So it makes sense. And these are coming from the operations that you're doing. There is K, nine is coming because you have three by three convolutions. That's gonna give you a nine. And then K prime is the output. That's the computational cost. And this is ReLU six. Basically the idea is that you want to cap your activation at a particular value for your activations not to become too big. So you're killing your activation at that point. And that's the exact formula for ReLU6, the macro structure of mobile net. Another look at mobile net, but with different strides. This is exactly what we have up there. The stride is one, but if the stride is two, you don't put the residual connection. So that's the only difference. You still have that linear operation. You have your depth wise convolution with a stride of two rather than a stride of one. And then you still have that one by one convolution. You don't have the residual connect. So Kevin is asking why not some other number, 10 or five? You could, that's a valid question. Why ReLU six? Why not ReLU five? Why not ReLU 10? Doesn't really matter. That's a great question. I don't have an answer to You have to write the code and see. Does that answer your question? Sorry if I missed this, but going back to the dimensions, I thought the the initial input and the final output should match to be able to add them? Yes. So sometimes they match and then you can add them. Sometimes they don't match and then you're not going to add. Uh, so, so it depends on your choice of S and uh, T. It, it depends on the choice of S and K prime to be exact because T we are taking care of it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. It depends on K prime and S. You're right. That's why here there is no residual connection. Because if you want to add the residual connection, then you need to uh, make the resolution higher or actually lower. Yes. And how does it compare to mobile net? This is how it compares. For mobile net, you have the depth wise separable convolution, but now you are adding a one by one convolution here and you are adding the residual connection. Basically you are doing, uh, I think it was Omar last session who asked this question. Why don't you just do a one by one convolution first? and then you do depth-wise separable convolution and then another one by one convolution. That's exactly what they're doing in mobile net version two. But in mobile net version one, this is what they were doing. So you can expand the dimension 
and then use the low dimensional one to add a residual connection. Now, what is the landscape of different small networks? I'm gonna tell you about ShuffleNet and NASNet later on, but now MobileNet version one are these blue circles. The X axis is multiply add in terms of millions. The Y axis is, a, is the accuracy. Now you're starting to see a Pareto frontier. So that's a Pareto frontier. Whenever you have multi-objective optimization, you're gonna end up with a Pareto frontier. That's the Pareto frontier for mobile net version one, and these are all version two with different resolutions. And I'm gonna tell you what is NASNet and uh, ShuffleNet next. And the timing on CPU is 75 milliseconds for processing the input image. And uh, the accuracy is actually pretty good. If you look at it, it's comparable to the rest of the landscape. Now, here is the question. Should we put a shortcut between bottlenecks, the smaller ones, or should we put a bottleneck between the expansion layers here and the next one? Or should we forget about residual connections altogether? The residual connections are going to give you this red curve in terms of top accuracy. And this is during training steps in millions. This is the if you put the shortcut between expansions, this is the accuracy that you get. And if you put shortcut between bottlenecks, the network behaves better. So not only it's cheaper, but also it's doing better in terms of accuracy and convergence. Any questions? These papers have small ideas, like ReLU6 was a small idea, and the other idea was residual connections between smaller blocks.